Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video we are going to look at this awesome little fixed blade knife from the company Wander Tactical. This here is the Monoceros, the smallest model in the Wander Tactical lineup to date. This here was shown at Blade Show 2022 down in Atlanta. I had a great opportunity to meet with the guys from Wander Tactical, take a look at their booth, give them a quick little interview, and check out this Monoceros on the spot. Immediately, I saw it, I liked it, it was really, really cool. It's a neat little design, and I absolutely love this knife. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through this in quite a bit of detail. I'm gonna show you a bunch of field use. I have used this at length at this point. I've had it for a couple of months, put it to some good use, and I definitely have some opinions. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Wander Tactical who did provide this for review. And so again, the Monoceros, the smallest knife in the Wander Tactical lineup to date. Very cool, a small little fixed blade knife, but capable of doing a good amount of work. Now at this point, I have put this through the paces and I definitely have some thoughts. This knife is definitely very capable. I've used it for a number of different tasks, but with that, I did uncover what I think is, and I'm certainly not gonna say a fatal flaw, but a flaw that could be corrected either by the user or by the company. And so with that, we're gonna turn it over, get into some field use, and I'll talk to you about the details. And so now taking a look at the Wander Tactical Monoceros in detail. Again, a really nice little EDC or companion blade. Now for me, this is a perfect little knife to bring out into the wilderness as a small shoulder carry or backpacking knife. Really, really cool. So I have had the opportunity to bring this out on a couple of trips at this point. Now the Monoceros finish, this is absolutely beautiful. This is one of the nicest finishes that I've seen and this is called Black Blood. And this has the brown micarta handle scales, phenomenal. And so here you can see, as I had this out on a quick little hiking trip, using this for some basic food prep. Having a small little knife like this is absolutely fantastic. And the Monoceros fills this role extremely well. For food prep, this knife absolutely sings. With an overall reported length at 6.2 inches, reported blade length of 2.4 inches, and reported thickness at 0.11 inches. This does a great job with food prep, and you can see here in a number of occasions using it for that purpose. Now, I did measure this as well and got closer to 6.5 inches for the overall length, 2.5 inches for the blade length, or 2.75 inches, including the little sharpening choil, and this has roughly a 1 8 inch thick stock of D2, tool steel. So being D2, I am a big fan personally. I like D2 and I use it on my own designs. I think it's a great overall serviceable steel that retains an edge fairly well. And using it here for the food prep as a little paring knife, just awesome. And I do like using my knives for all the tasks that I typically do to see how it will perform. And the Monoceros is right up there in terms of fit and finish, in terms of comfort and the overall capabilities in the hands. And you'll see using it for a number of different food items, every knife is going to react a little bit different and on each one of the different mediums. So from salami in the field to chicken in the kitchen, some strawberries using this as a paring knife, and now trying to get fine little slices on the cheese, the Monoceros doing a pretty good job overall and definitely filling this small little food prep role. And so generally speaking, I do like this for that purpose, but the main use for me and my fixed blade knives, that's gonna be the fire prep. So you can see here, I did use this as a front pocket carry, leveraging an Ulti clip. Now the Ulti clip does not come with this. I added it to this, but you can see absolutely perfect on the front of my cargo pockets or inside my main pocket, extremely convenient. The Kydex done very well from Wander Tactical. Now getting into the harder use in leveraging the Monoceros for my field and fire prep tasks. This is where I'm really going to start to develop an idea and an impression of what this knife can do, what its strengths are, 
and where it might have some weaknesses. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, I did determine that this does have, in my opinion, a fairly significant yet overcomable deficiency. In my opinion, I believe that the grind angle on this bevel should be changed to be a little bit steeper. In my opinion, it's a little bit broad, and that means that my angle of attack is not really ideal for my personal carving style. Edge angle is definitely something that to each their own. So just because I have my opinion, other people will have different opinions and obviously Wander Tactical designed it the way they did in the first place. But getting here into some carving tasks, you'll see working down and planning on this wood, I'm trying to prepare myself a fire. And so the main thing for me, there's gonna be a combination of splitting tasks, of carving tasks, and striking tasks. And here you can see getting into some of the carving right away, trying to get myself some curls, trying to really get some little fine feathers, and work towards getting myself some kindling and some tinder to start my fire. And the one thing to keep into consideration because this is a shorter blade, it's gonna be a little bit limited in terms of what you can do and how you're going to approach it. But generally speaking, doing a fairly nice job. Now, batoning for me, I know it's a little bit controversial and again, to each their own, but I personally do rely on batoning a ton, a ton, a ton. Sometimes it's larger wood, sometimes it's smaller wood. And of course, with a smaller blade, this here, being roughly about 2.75 inches of spanable length on the blade, you're certainly not gonna baton anything of substantial size. However, what I can say, because this is a Scandi ground knife, it kind of acts a little bit like a saber grind. Saber grinds, in my opinion, are the perfect shape and overall geometry for batoning. And in this particular case, the Monoceros has a great geometry for splitting tasks. So why not do some batoning and getting down here and splitting some small little kindling into pieces that are actually going to catch? This is the difference between struggling to start your fire and starting it with ease. So putting the Monoceros to the test is absolutely critical. Now again, after some of the harder work, just getting back into some larger curls again, finding some split wood to get onto and to make sure that I have the capability of doing these carving tasks. So leveraging the Monoceros and that edge geometry, I am able to find it okay, but I definitely am struggling just a bit. I find that the edge is gliding and glancing a little more than I would like. And I'm not exactly 100% sure why, but again, in my opinion, I believe that's due to the overall edge geometry and that secondary grind angle. So paying attention to it here and really trying to understand it, if I rock my hand forward a little more, I am able to get appropriate bite, but that goes just a little bit beyond my typical carving style. But nonetheless, needing to progress, here you can see getting some larger curls. This is doing a fairly nice job biting into the wood, but again, I go back to my point that I feel as though if this had a slightly different edge geometry, it would work a little bit better, but we're gonna get into that in a little more detail further on. The other thing worth noting is the comfort of the handle. The handle absolutely perfectly indexing in my hands and completely filling it out. And that really aids in comfort for carvability. And in this particular case, the Monoceros handle is wonderful. It literally is a full four fingered grip and the way they shape it, it indexes phenomenally. And the other thing is the overall shape of the knife in combination with the handle and the way that they have really worked the edges and sanded everything nicely, it just contours and it fills out the hands. There are no hot spots, there are no sharp angles. Everything worked over extremely well and this is a very effective tool in the hand. Feeling wonderful. So a nice job with the overall handle and the fit and finish. Now here you can see I am getting to work with this fat wood. The thing about fat wood, different knives work differently on fat wood, so I always like to test it, but this is another case where you can see the Monoceros is gliding just a bit. It's not getting the bite, it's not shearing away the fat wood the way I like, and it's not really producing the pieces that I like. I like to have some chunks, I like to have some larger pieces, and I also like to have some curls. And on top of that, some of the fuzz. So the ability to really process the wood is just a little bit limited, and I wanted to test this 
with Amora. To me, Amora is a fairly standard Scandi grind. And you can see in this case, even though it fell off camera just a bit, it's doing a better job with the carving. It's getting deeper bite. And I also have to admit, the more is going to be thinner stock. So you would think naturally it would actually carve better, which it does. But in my opinion, it's more due to the actual edge geometry and the fact that the Mora is zero ground versus the Monoceros, which has that secondary bevel. And so just putting it up against the test to kind of benchmark it, again, I do feel as though I am certainly getting the more performance and just an easier time finding the edge geometry on the Mora rather than the Monoceros. So something that can certainly be worked out, but it's something worth noting. And I don't want people to think that this kills the overall capabilities of the knife. It's just something that you're gonna have to work with. Now trying to go even lighter and getting those dainty fine little curls. This is another place where if you lighten up a bit and you try to get those fine curls, well, how does it really work out? And again, comparing it against the Mora, the Mora just has the ability to find that edge geometry, run down the wood a little bit smoother. And a Scandi does typically want to bite. So a lot of times it's really, you gotta be very dainty to get those super fine curls. But in this case, you can see the more just a more refined edge in comparison to the Monoceros. So something worth considering. And I just think that's an important point, not detrimental to the overall capabilities of the knife, but it is an important factor and something that has to be considered. Now, again, as I mentioned, taking a look at the different stock thicknesses, the Monoceros is close to a 1 8 inch stock thickness. So it's going to be fairly robust overall and has the capability of doing some hard work. Yet at the same time, it's going to be fine enough. And you can see due to that short blade length, I racked on my knuckles a couple of times. Now, another place where this should excel is on scraping. A really nice, sharp 90 degree spine. Very easy to strike my ferro rod. Very easy to get some fuzz and fluff off a piece of wood or a piece of fat wood. And generally speaking, doing exactly what I needed. So the Monoceros, again, definitely capable, definitely fits a lot of niches, has a lot of incredible attributes. It's just that edge geometry catches me a little bit by surprise. And so, all right, guys, there you have it. A field use look at the Monoceros. Again, just a gorgeous knife. I love the way this looks, but you could see overall definitely capable of doing some good work. Just left a little bit shy by, in my opinion, the grind angle. So let's talk about this a little bit more in detail. And so the thing about grind angle, it's definitely not going to be like a one and done solution for all knives. I mean, that's the first thing, of course, each and every different knife is going to have a little bit of an optimal grind angle and each sort of style, each sort of intended use, and even each sort of steel at times will have an optimal grind angle. Now you can see here, this is basically a Scandi ground knife. Again, Scandi ground with a secondary bevel. And in my opinion, it's the secondary bevel that kind of gets us on this model at this time. Now there's a few things I'm gonna say. You saw it was sort of skating over the wood at different times, not quite getting the bite that I would personally like. If you look at a traditional Scandi ground knife, like say for example, a Mora Companion, which everybody knows. Now this is not the perfect example, but it's gonna get you close in concept. This is zero ground on that bevel. There is no secondary bevel. As you look, you can see it does shine just a tiny little bit. I mean, there's not much you can do to really avoid sort of rounding out the edge after some use. And so that will happen. But this is a grind that goes all the way down from the actual primary bevel all the way down and meets up on both sides to what's considered to be a zero ground Scandi edge. But in the case of the Monoceros, it's a little bit of a hybrid where you end up with your primary bevel, but then it goes down to that secondary grind. And so in terms of the angle, what I want to point out, and this is again, not going to be perfect, but I have a little gauge and this is just an indicator. It's not going to tell you exactly what the angle is. These are far inaccurate for that purpose, but just for the demonstration, I'm going to take the knife, 
put it in the laser. Now we can't look at those bright red beams right there. You kind of can't look at that because that is not an indication of the edge. That's an indication of your primary grind. But looking off the chart as I rock this to the side, see the line that starts to develop? That is the indication of your actual secondary bevel and the angle and it falls off the chart as you look at it here it falls off the chart and the edge of my chart here is about 24 degrees so what that's telling me is that this angle isn't really registering on the chart the way that it should and i believe that's because the edge angle is too broad it's just a little bit wide a little bit broad and it's casting that light off the edge now just for the sake of the comparison i do have some other models to show you that you may be somewhat familiar with let's take for example an se azula i'm bringing this into the mix because it is fairly similar in overall size different in terms of the grind of course but let's take a look at it on the chart as i take the knife and get it set in here the grind angle seems to be roughly ballpark, and I would say somewhere in that 18 to 20 degree mark based upon this particular chart and this particular laser. Again, is this gonna be perfect? No, it's just a rough indicator, and you can see the line off to the side, all the way to the side, on each side, as I get those roughly centered, I would say somewhere between 18 to 20 degrees. The SE Zancudo, dropping it in. And again, maybe 20 to 22 degrees, somewhere in that range. A top Silent Hero 4, dropping it in. This is gonna be a little bit harder, but as I rock it, maybe I would say 16 to 18 degrees. And I have a little prototype of my TCAL accomplice that I've been playing with sitting here. This one's very pronounced. You can see here, all the way to the edge, that is about 20 degrees. Now the final example, and again, this is not gonna be perfect, but taking the Mora and dropping it in. This is really tight. This is like, 16 degrees so that one's really beaming there it might even be less than that it might be closer to 12 but again hard to say but it, it, as i mentioned this is not perfect science it's just an indicator and between the work that i've done the way that it feels on the wood and what i'm seeing on the gauge i feel like this edge is too broad it's not tight enough and if this was actually a zero ground Scandi, I think it would have performed better. So in my opinion, I urge the people that wander tactical to take a look at that. And really, could this be a zero ground Scandi design? Now that's gonna do a couple of things. It is going to improve the sliceability, that's for sure. But the other thing it's gonna do, well, let's be careful. Maybe the edge won't be quite as durable. So if you don't have that secondary bevel, at that point, it leaves your edge a little more susceptible to damage. So it is a little bit what I would say to each their own and their personal preference when it comes to grind and grind angle and edge geometry. And furthermore, this is D2 tool steel. D2 can be a little bit chippy. Now I have not had too many problems and I don't even mean chippy in terms of what you can see. It can also be chippy on a microscopic level. So if this was zero ground, what happens is there are carbides in the metal and D2 tends to have larger flakes. And sometimes on a microscopic level, those flakes can really delaminate and pull off. You can barely see it with your eye or maybe not even, but on a microscopic level, sometimes that's why you end up with an edge that's not quite so sharp feeling and doesn't perform quite as well. And that's definitely something to consider with D2. So because Wander Tactical uses really in essence only D2 on their knives, you definitely need to be careful with the edge. So my question is, what's the right thing to do? Could you steepen up that secondary bevel just a bit Maybe get it a little sharper 
get a slightly tighter angle? Or do you really at that point go to a zero ground Scandi edge? So I might play around with trying to reprofile this a bit. That is certainly something a typical user could do. It's going to take you a little more time with D2, but at the same time, it is certainly something you can consider. But all in all, just a phenomenally beautiful knife. I love this finish. It is just gorgeous. I love the handles and I love the fit and finish. Wonder Tactical doing a fantastic job on the entire knife. And this indexes just extremely well. I love the way this fits in my hands. I love the way it feels. And the only thing, as I mentioned, because it is a shorter blade length, you might have the tendency to run your hand down into the work. If you're not careful, you can see after a while, I did sort of scuff up my knuckle. Not a real factor in terms of the quality of the knife or anything like that. It's just basic geometry and basic mechanics and what happens with a shorter blade. Now the sheath you can see, I have personally put the Ulti clip on here. It actually comes with a soft loop, which is a very functional way to carry this on your belt. For me personally, I really love having that front pocket ride. So I added the Ulti clip simply for a matter of convenience. And you can see that'll go nicely on your pocket and clip that down. So it makes a nice front pocket carry. And then carrying this on my shoulder strap on a pack, just fantastic. And Wander Tactical doing a great job with their Kydex. A good solid click. This is going nowhere. Perfect drainage holes. And you can see exposing just that little bit of the blade there. Really cool. Looking nice. I like it. And so the ramp, just really easy to push off and deploy the knife. The overall fit, fantastic. So Wander Tactical doing a great job, not just with the fit and finish on the knife itself, but the entire package. And so, all right, guys, there you have it. A look at the Wander Tactical Monoceros. Again, a really cool little knife. I do like it quite a bit. You've seen this in a good amount of work, food prep, field tasks, just the general things that you need from a good quality little companion blade. Now pair this up with a larger tool, such as an ax, a saw, a larger chopper, and you really have yourself a gorgeous system. Wander Tactical definitely having a number of other blades that fit some of the larger genre, so having something that small is a great offering from them. I do think just a little bit of work to work on that edge would aid in overall performance in most tasks, but hopefully not leave the edge susceptible to damage. That's the only thing worth considering, but generally speaking, it does perform, it does perform well, and it does most things fairly well, with the exception being I just like a little more carvability for those smaller and finer tasks. But overall, a great knife, and I definitely like it. And so again, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Wander Tactical for providing this for review. And if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless 2 channel, which is more on the tactical and firearm side of things. At this point, that channel is growing quickly. So if you like what you see here on Outer Limitless, do me a favor and check me out on Outer Limitless 2. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.